in order issue, out of order, uh, excuse me, in order front end, out of order issue, out of order write back, and in order commits. So the middle portion of the pipe here is all out of order. And then finally we commit in order and we fetch in order. So this has all of those structures that we had before. It's sort of the, the union of everything. We have a issue queue, we have a, a future store buffer, we reorder buffer, physical register file, scoreboard, and architectural register file. This requires us to have everything. <clears throat> and we can start thinking about um, what this does to performance. So I'm going to push through here because um, I only have two more slides and the state would get lost otherwise. Okay, so let's, let's see some interesting things happening here. So we have out of order issue. So we can see this add here issuing before this other, uh, before this multiply. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Ignore this bottom for a second here. Um, we have um, that same problem sort of showing up here. We have this write happening, but even an out of order issue processor, th this should be able to be pulled back, as I said before, but it doesn't because uh, at this point, you'd have a, a write hazard, you'd have a hazard in the, on the write back of the register file. Uh, something similar, if you try to issue here, you'd be issuing two instructions at the same time. So this, this starts to be a problem, so it actually ends up getting pulled out. Interestingly enough, the performance of this is, is not a whole lot better than what we had before. Um, if you sort of like cut it here, we're at 15 cycles, the commit gets pushed out far, because uh, you have to commit in order. But this fixes a lot of problems that we had in the in order fetch, out of order, out of order, out of order, because we can have precise exceptions at the end of a pipe, we can have out of order issue, out of order execute. We still do in order fetch because that's kind of the semantics of programs. Um, so let's, let's take a look at, um, let's say we had the ability to do double issue, but not double execute. How does this change? We actually, that changes this to this diagram. And as you can see here, we actually have an I here and an I here in the same time period. So we've pulled that back one. And that, that, you would think that would actually uh, help, but you know, so we don't, we don't have a write conflict. Everything's still sort of okay here, but the commit still happens at the same time. So that's not always, always as good as you think. In reality, what you want to start thinking about is having out of order and with. So here we have a out of order, two wide superscalar, what we showed before, uh, uh, in order fetch, out of order uh, issue, out of order write back, and in order commit. And what we can see is we actually are fetching two instructions at a time, decoding two instructions at a time, issuing two instructions at a time. And this, this can actually uh, help a little bit, um, but you still have problems. So here we're just going to have we can only, uh, we'll be able to issue two, but we're not going to have two ALUs. We're going to have the same sort of back end of the pipe. And what we start to get limited by is we end up with sort of execution resource bottlenecks here. So next time we're going to start talking about how to sort of add multiple ALUs and you can sort of pull this earlier and maybe even have two multiplies or something like that and try to remove some of those complexities. But what's nice about this is if you have double issue, out of order, right back, you know, these add instructions that are not dependent on these malls at all can just happen. And that's really nice. Okay, we're going to stop here for today.